Hello and welcome to Kina Keys. Today I will show you something different. The TC Electronic June 60 version 2. It's a chorus effect pedal. But it's not just any chorus effect pedal. It should recreate the legendary lush and warm chorus of the Roland Juno 60. The Juno 60 was released at the end of 1982. It's the programmable version of the Juno 6, which is otherwise identical. It was one of the first affordable polysynth. Not exactly cheap, but much more inexpensive than a Jupiter 8 for example. And about 30,000 units were sold. One way to keep the price low was to use only one oscillator per voice. This can make the sound thinner and a bit lifeless. And to compensate for this, a stereo chorus was added and became one of the defining features of the Juno sound. By the way, the same chorus was also used for the Juno 106. What a chorus basically does is doubling an instrument. A natural chorus effect can be heard when two singers sing the same notes, for example. And even if they sing in tune with each other, there are slight differences in timing and pitch, which are hard to avoid. And that's a good thing, because these slight variations make the sound richer and fuller. A chorus mimics this by delaying one or more copies of the input signal and varying the delay time with an LFO, a low frequency oscillator. The delay times are usually quite short, maybe 15 to 30 milliseconds, so you don't get a noticeable delay effect. But it's enough to slightly change the timing and the pitch as well, because the waveform is periodically compressed and stretched in the process. And as we all know from the Doppler effect, when the waveform is squeezed, the pitch gets higher. And when the waveform is stretched, the pitch gets lower. A mono chorus mixes both signals to one output. For a stereo chorus, it's important to have two slightly different signals for the left and right channels. Otherwise, it could not be perceived as stereo. The easiest way to achieve this is to send the dry signal to the left output and the effect signal to the right output. Another method would be to send a mix of dry and effect signal to both outputs, with one effect signal face inverted. But this can cause mono-compatibility problems. A true stereo chorus, like the one in the Juno 60, will use a second copy of the input signal, which will be delayed and modulated differently than the first effect signal, by inverting the waveform of the LFO, for example. A chorus usually has a depth control, to change the amplitude of the LFO waveform and therefore the intensity of the effect, and a rate or speed control, which controls the speed of the LFO. It might also have a mix knob, some kind of EQ, and a stereo width control. The resulting effect will vary depending on the speed and depth settings. It's not really like a natural doubling effect, but it has its own distinct quality. Now you might ask, what's so special about the Juno 60 chorus? Well, it's very musical, has a lot of character, and blends perfectly with a synth sound, giving it width and depth. But it doesn't have any manual controls. It only has three presets. Preset 1 is quite slow. Preset 2 is a bit faster. And when you push both buttons at the same time, you get a third preset. It's quite fast and has a narrower stereo image. The Juno 60 has been used by many, many musicians from the 80s to today and can be heard on hundreds of recordings. The chorus is definitely a major component of the overall sound, and I doubt that the Juno 60 would fetch such high prices on the used market without this chorus. Let's see what's written on the box. Authentic recreation. That sounds promising, and it would be great if this were true, especially regarding the price of 59 euros. There's not much doubt about what this device should be. It's not just the name. It's the entire look, with the wooden ends and the two buttons for the presets. But oddly enough, the main color is gray, which is more reminiscent of the Juno 106. I would have preferred black. Designed in Denmark, made in China. The first impression is quite good. It looks and feels well made. But after all, it's the sound that counts. I have to say my expectations are quite low, because this is already the second attempt of TC Electronic to recreate that effect. The first version was also advertised as an authentic recreation, but it sounds quite different. 
and it received many bad reviews, especially from keyboard players, whose expectations were understandably quite high. TC Electronics seemed to have taken that into account with this new version, which should have a lot of major improvements. And I thought, okay, they may have been a little off with version 1, marketing and sound-wise. They wouldn't do that a second time, wouldn't they? That at least was my motivation to buy version 2. Here we have the first improvement, a switch to select the input level. Version 1 was made for guitar. That's usually not a big problem. A lot of keyboard players, including myself, use guitar effects for synth. However, the input signal might be a bit too hot. You would have to turn down the volume a fair amount, resulting in a bad signal to noise ratio. So it's recommended to switch it to keys for any instrument with a line level output. And here we see the second improvement. Two tiny switches to change the LFO speed of the presets. Slow should match the original Juno chorus settings. And fast should give you the settings of version 1, which should be more appropriate for guitar. Now, these switches might look like the best of both worlds. But a real improvement would have been to omit the preset buttons and install depth and speed controls instead. So the customer could decide which are the best settings for synth or guitar. That would also have been an improvement over the original. In addition to these switches, the complete circuitry is said to have been revised and the stereo image improved. This cool audio V3207 is a BBD, a Bucket Brigade device. There are two of them, for each delay line. It's an integrated circuit that contains a large number of capacitors. And like in a Bucket Brigade, in which a line of firefighters passes a bucket of water, the audio signal moves along the line of capacitors, and each capacitor delays the signal a bit. The transport is synchronized by a clock generator, which is modulated by an LFO. Of course, none of these are original components. They are no longer manufactured, hard to find and really expensive. There's another clone of the Juno 60 chorus available, the MOE Analog Chorus 60. This should use some of the original components, but it's also 8 or 9 times more expensive. I will use it with battery. It also runs with 9 volts power supply, negative center. I will compare to the original first. It's a pity that it doesn't have two output jacks. I would have expected that from a stereo chorus. This is a TRS jack and you need a Y split cable for stereo operation. Of course you have to set the switch to stereo. In fact you can leave it to stereo all the time, even if a mono cable is connected. This switch is more or less useless, cause when it's set to mono, you don't get the same signal on both outputs. And you also don't get a combination of both channels on one output. It only mutes the right channel. I have absolutely no idea what that might be good for. I think they should have used the space for the input selector. I also connect the phone's output to my audio interface so I can record both signals at the same time. Other than the original, these preset buttons stay down when pressed. Therefore, you always have to press both buttons to switch between the presets. Not very convenient. The chorus is off when both buttons are unpressed. As with the original, we also have a little difference in volume here. But this is a much better way to turn the effect off than using the true bypass. The difference between effect and bypass volume is way too big. That makes it impossible to use the true bypass during a performance. Now let's see how it sounds. I recommend listening with headphones. First impression is not too bad, a little bit different.
stereo image seems to be a bit wider. Yes, definitely a different stereo image. Let's try preset 3. I don't use this very much on the original because of the narrow stereo image. It's quite similar. I love this. The chorus perfectly melts with the sound. It's similar, but not the same. The effect as such is a bit more noticeable. sounds a bit distorted. Let's try some different sounds. There's a strange noise in the decay. This is not as much distorted, but it sounds like there are dropouts. They can change depending on the played note. This sounds really broken. I don't mind if the effect is coloring the signal. That's what I'm expecting when I use an analog device. The original chorus also does that, but this is too much and goes the wrong direction. It sounds like it was recorded too hot on bad tape. I will try a simpler sound. This is a pure square wave. If you play low single notes, you can better hear what I mean with dropouts. First the original. And now the June 60. It's most noticeable when I play the C. Sounds like phase cancellation. That would explain why it isn't the same with every note and sound. A quick look at the waveform confirms that the LFO works differently. This is the original. 
and this the June 60. But that doesn't explain the distortion. It's most prominent when you play chords. This is without any chorus. The original chorus. And the June 60. I never considered the original chorus to be very clear. But compared to the June 60, it is. This almost sounds like something is damaged. And it's not because the input is too hot. I've tried both input settings of the June 60 and different output settings of the Juno, all with the same result. However, I really wanted to be sure that nothing is broken and ordered a second unit. But unfortunately, it sounds exactly the same. It seems to work much better with darker sounds, but it's a bit unpredictable. seems to depend on the pitch, as well as on the waveform of the sound, whether it distorts or not. Honestly, I could stop right here. This is unfortunately not an authentic recreation. And although my expectations weren't very high, I'm quite disappointed. Because the basic functionality of the original chorus is actually quite simple. We need two delay lines and an LFO with triangle waveform, 100% depth and a slow speed between 0.4 to 0.8 Hz. I will try to create this effect with a stereo chorus of my Boss ME50, with depth and mix at maximum. I will adjust speed while the arpeggiator is running. It's not perfect. The original has some qualities that this one doesn't have. Probably because it's a digital device. And as TC Electronic already said, going all analog is the only way to achieve that unmistakable timbre and touch of the original. And they should know, because their very first pedal, released in 1976, was a stereo chorus. It was produced for about 40 years, and a new version is on the way. So these guys know what they are talking about. But it's strange to say something like that about a device like this, when at the same time digital versions exist that are much closer to the original. For example, the Arturia June 6 or the TAL Chorus LX, which by the way is freeware. However, I will try it with a couple other instruments. I really love my Korg Poly 61, but I always felt it was missing a chorus. And I hope that this little box would be perfect for the job. Again, 
How much noticeable distortion you get depends on the sound you choose. In this case, it could be a nice effect. Most pads sound quite good. But there are also some that doesn't. You never know what you get. That's quite unusable. But for this pad, it sounds perfect. Definitely has a certain quality. It muffles the sound a little and gives it warmth, at least compared to a digital chorus. But for a crystal clear sound, you will need something else. I will also try the fast settings of version 1. Thank you. 
there's nothing wrong with the fast settings. But now I can understand why most of the keyboard players were very disappointed with version 1. And once again, I wish this thing had speed and depth controls. Having to unscrew the unit every time you want to change the speed is quite cumbersome. Let's try a monosynth. Not my favorite chorus for this application. Too many dropouts. And finally, I should try it with guitar and bass. I will first try it in stereo and connect it directly to my audio interface. It's also a little distorted, but that doesn't sound too bad. While the true bypass is too loud in key mode, it is a bit too quiet in guitar mode. Again, deselecting both buttons is a better way to turn off the effect. Now we'll connect a mono cable and try it with an amp. And I finally found out what the mono stereo switch is for. The true bypass isn't working in stereo mode if a mono cable is connected. But if you prefer the untrue bypass like me, you can stay in stereo mode. That sounds okay to me. Preset 2 with a bit overdrive. Preset 3. I will also try the fast LFO settings. And preset 2. I 
I can't see why the fast settings should better suit the guitar. They are a bit too strong for my taste. Let's see how it works with bass guitar, but I will set it back to slow speed. Preset 2 with pick. I like it. This could be my favorite bass chorus. And preset 3. So, what do we have here? A stereo chorus, without a doubt inspired by the Juno 60 chorus. But the LFO is different, the stereo image is different, and the coloring is different. Not much left to call it an authentic recreation. And it's unfortunately not even a well-designed piece of equipment. Yes, it sometimes sounds better than my digital chorus, and it's sometimes better than no chorus at all. But it's not a set and forget chorus. It's more like a can I use it for the sound or does it ruin it chorus, at least in combination with keyboards. The coloring and distortion is something I can live with. It's not the coloring I expected, but it could be useful if you want to add some dirt. Of course, that's not what I bought it for. The original chorus definitely adds some color and a little bit distortion, but in a much more subtle way. Most annoying are the dropouts, which are quite unpredictable. The internal switches are a bit awkward to use. The mono switch is useless, and the volume difference of the true bypass is much too high. It works most reliably with guitar and bass and mono, but it wouldn't be my first choice if I were looking for an authentic 80s guitar sound. The Juno 60 chorus wasn't used for guitar in the 80s. And I don't understand why they stick to the two preset buttons of the original chorus. For guitar, I would prefer a chorus with adjustable speed and depth. TC Electronic undoubtedly made a lot of nice guitar pedals. This is not their masterpiece. And maybe it takes a version 3 to get it 100% right. I guess I will have to look for another chorus for keyboards. Maybe I'll use this one for bass. Or as a split box. And the wooden panels also fit on any other TC Electronic pedal of this size. Well, isn't that something? But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.